medical gross anatomy lab one, the lower limb. The lower limb is divided into four parts: the hip, the thigh, the leg, the foot. The hip is a region lateral to the gluteal regions, and it's inferior to the iliac crest, overlying the greater trochanters of the femur. Whereas the thigh is the regions between the hip and the knee, the leg is the regions between the knee and the ankle, the foot is distal to the ankle. As you can see here, the、um, hip, the thigh, the leg, and the foot. Okay. Now the functions of the lower limb. The function of the lower limb is for weight bearing, for locomotions, and maintenance of equilibrium. The sections overview. What do we want to、uh, remove? So we're gonna remove the skin, the subcutaneous tissue, the fat, and、uh, what do we want to preserve? We want to preserve the superficial fascia. We want to preserve the superficial veins.、Uh, most importantly, the great saphenous vein. And we also want to preserve the cutaneous nerve. So, what is the great saphenous veins? Why is it so important?、Uh, the great saphenous veins. It's previous. Previously called the long saphenous veins, and it's a large subcutaneous superficial veins of the leg, right here, in blue, and it's the longest、uh, vein of the body running along the length of the leg. It runs along the medial side of、uh, the leg, right here. So the great saphenous veins、uh, originates in the、um, first dorsal veins when、uh, when the first dorsal veins right here of the first、uh, first digits merges with the dorsal venous arch of the foot. So so the dorsal venous、uh, arch of the foot is right here. When it merges with the、um, first uh, dorsal veins, uh, the the dorsal veins of the first digits right here merges with the dorsal venous arc, and that forms is、uh, that forms the、um, the saphenous vein, the great saphenous veins right here, and that vein will、uh, courses anterior to the medial. Malleolus, the medial malleolus, right here, like your ankle, right here. It's uh, for, it will go anterior to that, and then it will course upward right here, onto the knee, where it will courses posterior to the medial epicondyle of the femur. So the Medial epicondyle of the femur is along the knee area, and it will go courses posterior to that epicondyle. And then the、uh, great saphenous veins then will course anterior, anterior, and it lies、uh, on the anterior surface of the thigh. Before it enter、uh, the opening、uh, at the fascia lata, the fascia lata opening, which is called the saphenous opening, and it will joins the femoral veins.、Uh, we joins the femoral vein right here in the femoral、uh, femoral triangle. Well, the femoral triangle will contains the femoral.、Uh, Vein, artery, and also the nerve right there in the femoral triangle. The cl、uh, clinical correlations、uh, of the、uh, great saphenous veins. So we see that in certain patients、um, who have undergone.
coronary bypass surgery, we are unable to locate the great saphenous veins because it is often harvested, harvested for that procedure. So they took out that great saphenous vein for the coronary bypass, so we wouldn't be able to uh, locate that in those patients, uh, locate the great saphenous vein in those patients. For the dissections, dissections of the anterior hip and thigh regions and also the posterior gluteal region. So first the uh, anterior hip and thigh. So we want to locate uh, the superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle. So here is the um, anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle. And connecting those two is the uh, inguinal ligaments. Is the inguinal ligaments connecting both? Okay, so we want to make a cut. So we want to make a cut along the inguinal ligaments, uh, inguinal ligaments from here. So from the anterior superior iliac spine right here uh, to the pubic tubercle right there. And then we also want to extend this cut around the medial side, medial side at E right here, the medial side of the thigh to the posterior surface of the thigh. And next, we want to make a um, vertical incisions, a vertical incisions right here, at number uh, F, uh, from the midpoint of the inguinal ligaments, so the inguinal ligaments, so we made a cut right here, so midpoint of that, we make a vertical cut from here down to the patella, from here down to the patella. So after we make that cut, we want to make another cut, a transverse cut along that, the long, uh, the uh, patella, uh, so that it's easier for us to uh, to make a cut along this area to remove the skin. So the next step is to remove the skin, subcutaneous tissue, and the fat. Um, and we want to locate the great saphenous veins on the medial side along this area right here of the thigh. And uh, we want to be very careful not to damage it. Uh, and be very careful with uh, removing those uh, superficial uh, uh, tissues and subcutaneous tissues. Uh, watch out for those uh, veins. So next, so after we've done with the interior thigh and hip, we want to go to um, dissect the um, uh, posterior gluteal regions. Um, we want to turn the donor into a prone position. Probably need a couple people uh, to help turn the donor into a prone position. And we, we want to make a midline incisions. Uh, midline incisions here. And we want to work from the medial to the lateral side. Right here, and make another incisions along the gluteus maximus muscle. The gluteus maximus muscle is the largest uh, muscles. The gluteal regions right here. We want to make an incisions right there, and uh, we want to detach the skin from J. J is right here to K, and. And then we want to uh, put those uh, tissues that uh, we have just detached into a tissues container using the bag, the black bag that uh, is given to us and uh, put all those uh, tissues in there and it will be kept with the uh, donor at all time. And um, so after that we want to remove subcutaneous tissues and fats until we reach the gluteus maximus. Right there.